address it. Okay, thanks. Good evening. As a preliminary matter, I am Tina Burgos of the Needham Human Rights Committee, and I will be chairing this meeting. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Cynthia? Yes. Renaz? Yes. Jen? Yes. Amelia? Yes. Marlene? Yes, did you Finn? Yes. Emmy? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Um, okay, good evening. This open meeting of the Needham Human Rights Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of the emerg of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting is a webinar and will allow the public to comment. For this meeting, the Needham Human Rights Committee is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and some attendees are participating by video conference. Please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I note otherwise. We are now turning to the first item in the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking, and remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, I will afford public comment as follows. I will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once I have a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Okay, the first item on the agenda is approval from of the minutes from March 17th. Does anybody have any additional comments or um, adjustments that they would like made? No, we're good. Can I please have a motion to approve the minutes from March 17, 2020? So moved. And a second, please. Second. Okay. Cynthia? Yes. Renaz? Yes. Jen? Yes. Amelia? Yes. Marlene? Yes. Finn? Yes. Emmy? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Okay, minutes from <clears throat> our meeting from March 17th, 2022 have been approved. Katie, is there anybody um, in uh, attending from the public? I'm Danica, so I can move over now or when the youth um, subcommittee is up. Whatever. You can, now it's fine. Okay, that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, so if you, Renaz asked if uh, she could speak first due to Ram, um, Ramadan, is everybody cool with that? Okay, so I'm just shifting the agenda slightly. Um, Renaz, I'm handing it over to you to just talk about yeah, your agenda item, which you asked to be put on tonight's um, meeting regarding the Needham Multicultural Festival. Yes, thank you very much. 
You so last, uh, at the beginning, I was thinking to call it International Day, but then Cynthia last time brought up that Wellesley does something similar. When I looked it up, they do have actually, they have something called Wellesley Multicultural Festival. And it's a town event organized in partnership with Wellesley Public Schools to highlight multiculturalism in the town and provide an opportunity to increase the participation of a previously oppressed or marginalized groups of people in the community. And um, I reached out to the organizer. They have like a website. I haven't heard back yet from them. But what I concluded, like it, it will help in like prejudice reduction for like different people from different backgrounds. And it will help in uh, increasing the respect for cultural differences. Uh, recently, my daughter wrote her uh, college essay and she put something after she has been struggling for years in public schools, trying to hide her identity because she was bullied where she came from. She wrote cultural appreciation is a fantastic practice because its principle extends beyond ethnic differences. And she said, I have realized having an open mind and being proud of one's differences shows others that they can be comfortable with their own differences. I reached out to the Muslim community in Nizam here, and they're from India, Pakistan, Iran, the Middle East, and they all welcome the idea. And they want to participate because their kids are going through the same thing. Everybody's trying to hide their cultural background because they're scared of being picked on instead of being celebrated, instead of these differences being celebrated. I also reached out to Raman uh, Abrishmanian. He's from the NDI, and he also welcomed the idea, and he is ready to help, and he said he will discuss it with the NDI too. Uh, also, Elliot School is doing Cultural Day on May 15th. There is also one more school. I'm not sure though this one, if it's either Sunita Williams or Mitchell School, they're also having Cultural Day uh, in something similar in, um, in May. Um, I just prepared the poster. I have a first draft. Of course, I want to share it with you before I go ahead. And, um, but I just have like, um, I don't know, like, it, like where this is going to take place. Like I need a location. Where are we going to hold the, the multicultural festival if you agree on it? And also does like um, the Human Rights Committee needs the permission to start this town initiative. Um, I was thinking maybe also about the time, the first weekend in October, but I'm not sure if there is any religious or any other um, political holidays. I tried to look quickly, but it looks like it's nothing so far. Um, what do you think? What, um, how are you envisioning the structure of yeah, the, sure. the festival? And I'm going to also share with you the link for the website for uh, Wellesley. The, I talked with one also of the dean of Wellesley College, and she told me that they do it. Um, this initiative is being like it's done with the town and through the school. So it's like a whole community thing. What I'm thinking is we can just um, announce that we're going to have this. We're going to have multicultural festival who's on board. And then I, we ha I have names of people from different backgrounds who are willing to set up their stands uh, to show like this. We eat this. We like we dress up like this. Um, uh, or they can have hands-on activity for the children, how to write your name in a different language, just to raise like awareness. You know, sometimes people would ask me if I say I'm from Syria, they say, oh, do you eat cookies there? Or do you go buy camel to school? Like just to say, no, like this is how we have winter, it snows. Like you can talk about different, different cultural things. I worry about, for example, the children, I was thinking now through the Ukraine and Russia problem, I was worried, worrying about the 
kids, the Russian kids in school. And I wish I know like who they are because we don't know. I don't know where my neighbors come from. Like if you know, then you can reach out to people say, hey, like I saw you in the multicultural festival. Like I know this is happening. Do you need any help? We're here for you. Something like that. So if we just announce that we're having this, who is, who is willing to come and join? Who wants to talk about their culture? Not everybody wants to do that. So if people start coming up, we can just choose a day, a location, and then each, each, uh, each person is responsible on their own booth. That's what I'm okay. thinking. Okay, um, before I ask for other comments, I'm having trouble with my computer tonight, so I can only see the person that's speaking. So it would be helpful for me if you guys hit the raise hand button, that might help me try to monitor or moderate um, the rest of this meeting and I apologize. Does anybody have any other comments or questions? Cynthia. Renaz, this is very exciting. I have uh, went to a number of them at uh, Wellesley and I think Wellesley College was very involved too because they have a lot of wonderful people from different backgrounds who are often very generous with their time. I think it was held in warmish weather. Um, in terms of whether this is something the Human Rights Committee can do, I think I remember long before I joined it that there was some kind of uh, like once a month, maybe Marlene would remember that, that they, they highlighted different cultures. So they didn't do it all at once, but, but the idea of doing that, I think is very much part of uh, what this, um, what the mission is of this group. And that we can think just as they had Wellesley College, we can think about Olin and some, and we, the Human Rights Committee with Marlene and Amelia, I was involved a little bit. We worked with Olin College before. So those are just a couple of quick things. Marlene. Thank you. Exactly what I was gonna say, what Cynthia said about um, Olin, I think that's a, a great idea and we could even maybe hold it there. I don't know if people would, if it's better to try to hold it in town. Um, if we do it in the fall, I don't know how long the construction on the center of town is gonna to be going on. Katie, you might know that. Um, I know a lot of stuff has been moved toward the, the Greensfield area. Um, so we, you know, we would need a big outside area. As, as far as the date of October 1st, I can just tell you there are no Jewish holidays then. So, so it, works, it works for the Jews. Um, um, <laughs> but I, I think the idea, I think it's a, a a really great idea. Um, and Cynthia, I don't really recall, um, maybe Amelia does about us doing this in the past, but I can't imagine that there's any reason that we need any other approval, just this committee's approval. Katie. Um, I, I agree with Marlene. I don't think you need any other approvals except this committee, um, unless it ends up being space or something. But um, I, and I wanted to say that Town Common is going to be on a renovation um, starting end of May, early June, probably for a full year. Um, so uh, the Common is really going to be offline for a while. Um, but if you're having it in the fall, uh, you'd probably want to be inside anyways. Belinda? So October 1st is usually the harvest fair. They usually do that the first Saturday of October. So just okay. FYI. That is good to know. Thank you. Amelia. Another, another place we might consider um, if the college doesn't work out is uh, the historical center in that area. And maybe um, Gloria could bring something in of, of uh, the cultural groups that, that have um, come to meet them. But I think yeah, having a, a different location might draw people um, to the event, more open space. We, um, in terms of what the Human Rights Committee has done in the past, I don't remember anything since I've been on, but I've heard from people who served on the committee before I joined, and they talked about events that they organized, um, focusing on one group, one, one culture. For example, I believe there was a night where they focused on Iran and, and people came and, and uh, made presentations. I don't remember the, uh, what, what was on the agenda, but uh, it was a very successful event and people in the town wanted, 
more, we're encouraging um, more such events. So is there sort of a general feeling that we want to focus on um, do one big event or spread this out and do think about doing several events over the course of, you know, three, six months? What, what do, how do people feel about that? And, you know, the impact of one versus the other? Um, I don't know. Can I? Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yes. We're yeah. Sorry. So I was thinking if we start, like we just announced it, we just see, have a feeling of the first year, you know, maybe, maybe we'll have only 10 countries the first year, maybe the next year it will spread and we'll have more. But if we have, I don't, I don't know. It's just an idea. If I think if it will be nice because each group also wants to share their um, cultural background and it will be nice to move on from one table to the other and people will be more interested to see like, oh, let's go just to see one country. But if it's like a lot of countries, different things, maybe it's because anyway, it's not going to be in the comments too. Like it's not something they have to put the effort to go and see this event. Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia, I think you're muted. Uh, it's easier to do one event and do it smaller to start off. And as you said, Wellesley, World of Wellesley partnered with the school system. I think that would be, if you haven't already done it, be once we approve it to uh, talk with the school department and get them behind it. And they're thinking of what time of year. And there's one of the schools works really well for that kind of thing is Newman School. I've seen, you know, all kinds of things with different booths. And so one time before when they used to have town meeting there, they had a whole bunch of organizations have booths around presenting what they were doing. And you could go from one to another and sign up for things. And if the school gets behind it, it may it probably would be farther into the future. But then if they get it on their calendar, you won't have the competition for at least other school events. And to draw, I see this as being a probably joint with the diversity initiative and some of the individual groups in town that might be presenters could be part of the planners or could just be resource people you get back to. Amelia. Uh, Renaz, I really liked what you said in, in the introduction. You really created a context and a purpose for this event. And I'm thinking about the, the feedback you got the last time you shared your ideas with us uh, two meetings ago where there was some uh, negative response from, from parents and, and people in the community. I really, I think if you provide that as a context, as a, a purpose for having people come together, um, I think it will be very effective and people will, will see it uh, as an opportunity as well as an interesting event. But, uh, and I'm thinking about all kinds of things we could do. So I, I really think this is exciting. So let's keep going. <laughs> Thank you. Marlene. Thank you. Um, I like the idea of having it outdoors, which would mean the fall. Um, and I like that it, to think about it just as one big event. Um, and um, I was just looking at the calendar and the weekend after is Columbus Day weekend, the weekend after that you suggested, but I don't know about September 24th. I don't know if that's a good, a, a good date for people or as somebody just said, maybe for the schools, it's too soon. Um, after this, the start of, of school. Um, but I, the other thing I'm thinking is um, having access to tents. So these groups may not have them. Um, so if you do, if you go inside, I think it takes away by having it inside. It's just, it's not as festive indoors um, as it is outdoors. I think it's just much more festive, uh, but then you need tents, <laughs> you know, covered, Things. So anyway, I don't know where we would get those. And I would assume a lot of these organizations, these, these groups may not have them. So that's just um, a, an FYI, not that it can't be done, but just to put it out there. Okay. 
does anybody else have any other comments? Is this, do we need to vote on this? Is this something we need to vote on to move forward? Okay, so if there are no additional comments now that we've sort of talked about the initial idea, um, can I get a motion to approve the planning of um, Nita Multi the Nita Multicultural Festival? Yay. Take a motion. And I, I'll take a second, please. Second. Okay. Um, Cynthia? Yes. R Renaz? Yes. Jen? Jenna, yeah, yeah, this computer is awful today. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amelia. Yes. Marlene. Yes. Finn. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Carrie. Yes. Okay, great. So we are going to move forward with the planning of the Nita Multicultural Festival. Um, the, obviously, Renaz can't take this on herself. So, um, if is there anybody th that is willing to volunteer to help with this sort of this uh, subcommittee to help plan. I'll provide the material. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Amelia is raising her hand. Her hand, you probably can't see her. I cannot see. No. Yeah. Is anybody else? <laughs> I'd be willing to do help. Also, Marlene. It's Marlene. Oh, thank okay. you, Marlene. Okay. So um, and Amelia. Uh, I will, Renaz, I'm going to email you, um, I will do it right after this meeting. So I don't forget just, um, sort of the protocol on running subcommittee because of open meeting law. It's, it's not, you just have to pay attention to timing. Um, and then you guys can start planning. For this too, for a subcommittee for this, we have to use open meeting law. Katie. I can get back to you. Yeah, okay, to thank plan you. an event, I mean, that doesn't seem where we already decided on it. Doesn't make sense to me, but. Okay, um, great. This is great. I think that's gonna be a really um, meaningful uh, event and hopefully we can keep moving forward with it in the future. The next item on the agenda is the um, the community conversations on race. I just, we just wanna give you guys a, an update on what's happening. So we had to push this event to May 17th because of logistical uh, reasons. It's going to be at Powers Hall. Uh, and this, is, this event is going to be concentrating on policing and youth Katie and Jen, I don't have all my notes on this. So if anybody wants to jump in just to give a little bit more feedback on the next event. Sure, we have a, um, a speaker, Mark Warren. He's a professor at UMass Boston. He's gonna give a national perspective on school resource officers um, and kind of what the data shows nationally on uh, differential impacts on students. Um, particularly by race. And then we have our Needham SRO, um, Officer Poirier, who's gonna uh, talk about what happens in Needham. And then we're gonna have small breakout discussions um, just for people to have an opportunity to reflect. Um, and then we'll share, share back to the larger group. And there, there will be a hybrid component um, so people can participate via Zoom. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the up next coming? Jen? Katie, have we gotten any registrants yet for it? Yes, don't ask me the number, but we have. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay, so again, it's going to be May 17th. I have 7 p.m. to 8.45, is that correct? Okay. And then the third and final event of the series is going to be held on June 13th, um, again at Powers Hall, and we're still figuring it out, right? <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so hopefully uh, we will see you guys on um, 
on the 17th. Jen. Is there another meeting scheduled for community conversations yet? Because I don't have anything on my calendar that I can. I don't either. Okay. Nope, not yet. It's um, on my list. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the youth subcommittee meeting that we put together and that included Emmy Finn, Danica, who is a volunteer. She lives here in Needham. Hello, Danica. Um, and myself met a few weeks ago to talk about a couple of events that we're trying to put together around um, Pride and Juneteenth. Um, I am going to ask uh, Emmy and Finn and Danica to, to talk about the sort of what we discussed. I have some of my notes in front of me, um, but do you guys want to start with pride? Oh, Amelia. Would Danica like to share her appearance <laughs> with us? Oh, video? sorry. Let me, let me do that. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see. Sorry. I didn't even see that you You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> it's totally up to you. Hiya. You are on mute. Okay, sorry, I tried to prop my phone up. <laughs> That's okay. Um, you wanna just quick in intro? Give it a quick intro and, and how you kind of became familiar with our group? Um, well, my dad told me about it and um, I immediately wanted to become interested just to see how I could help out around Needham and uh, do at least a little something like when I'm not in school and just additional work. And then I heard more about the projects and I think that they could really impact and help a lot of people. And um, yeah, so I'm kind of helping plan them, I guess. <laughs> Great. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Uh, okay. So um, Emerson, Emmy, Finn or Danica, do you guys want to talk about what we discussed with um, let's let's kick off with pride. What we the, some of the ideas we had for um, you know around the wishing tree, the reading the reading list. I mean, yeah. so um, for the first idea we had for pride was to make like a wishing tree. So that would be um, notes of affirmation, um, just like small messages that people from. The high school from the community could write and we could create a display out of them with like a colorful wishing tree and display that um possibly at the high school um i think at town hall would be really good too just at various places and that would be displayed for pride month and then also do some sort of like book club meeting, um, book discussion about a book that's related to, um, we haven't found a book exactly, but something related to LGBTQ and that um, kind of is important and has a, the author is really important, like that the author has personal experience and knowledge about it. And then we could have a discussion with any like members of the community that wanted to participate. Uh, Finn or Danica, do you have, do either of you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, so we talked about both of those things and then we kind of talked about that with Juneteenth as well, just doing like a reading list and also providing like a bunch of different levels of books so that families can participate or people who like kids can participate mostly and people that there's different levels for everyone so that no matter your reading level or anything like that, that you can participate and be part of conversations and they'll all like relate in some way. And of course, like Emmy said, all the authors will have um, the right credentials, especially for things like Pride Month and Juneteenth. Exactly, and um, by the wishing tree, maybe having some sort of table that, um, that has these books or has some sort of educating information so that um, not only are people getting their stories out through the wishing tree, but maybe through forms of literature or just, um, I don't know, stories or petitions, um, stuff like that. Right, so the wishing tree idea came out of um, the, high, the high school, right? You guys, there, there was something, you guys had a similar, there was a similar initiative um, done at the high school where people would submit 
again, affirmations, wishes. Um, I was also thinking that we could, in addition to um, the affirmations and the wishes, hang um, different historical facts. You know, what does LGBTQ stand for? What is Stonewall? Um, uh, you know, other things that sort of, again, what Danica was talking about, um, include some educational aspects to the tree. Um, and then the reading lists slash reading um, the book clubs or discussions, we talked about, um, again, developing a list that was comprehensive enough so that different levels, age levels can participate, um, you know, from younger kids all the way up to more mature audiences. Um, I've already talked to the library and they are going to do, uh, as they did with Juneteenth last year, they're going to put together um, a display for both Juneteenth and for Pride um, once we submit our list of books. So that's all set. Um, and then for Juneteenth, we had also talked about potentially doing some sort of event. I just don't think we have enough time to put it together. And uh, Amelia had pointed out to me that uh, that is also Father's Day. So um, we need to flesh out a little bit more about Juneteenth and, and just kind of figure out if there's anything else that we want to put together aside from the reading list and working with the library. Um, Marlene, and I think Amelia, you had your hand up, so I'll turn it over to you after Marlene. Um, it sounds really good, interesting. I'm just curious about the book discussion that you're talking about um, in, in terms of Pride, um, Pride Month, How, would that have coincide with or be in addition to, um, they, we changed the name of the diversity book group. Um, would this be for that month? Would we this be something separate? Are you guys familiar with the, uh, um, what's yep. it called so it's, again? What's, I forget what it's called. It's got a new name. It's not- Needham Connects. Yes, Needham Connects, Needham right. Connects yes. So I talked to Anna, I, I think their last, their last meeting either happened or is happening soon. Um, she said that she'd be willing to promote it, but there really wasn't any further discussion about having them help facilitate, but I can circle back with her on that. It, it sounded like they were just winding things down for before the summer. Uh, they have May 26 uh, is Poet Warrior, a memoir by Jay Harjo, a Native American. That's Okay, and I think that might one. be the last one before fall. It was my understanding from the email that I got. But I'll circle back with her and see if that's something that we can work on together. Um, as I said, she's willing to promote it, but I think that's sort of the end of that. As, that's as far as she's willing to go right now. Um, Amelia, sorry, you had your hand up earlier. At our last NDI meeting, um, the group express interest in being a co-sponsor for anything that we are planning for Juneteenth. And uh, they didn't mention Pride, but I'm sure they would be interested in Pride Month as well. Um, so, and they said they would be willing to help and organize some events so we could get them involved as well, uh, if you want. I, I really am reluctant to plan anything for Father's Day Right. I just can't see. I mean, we don't get a big turnout for um, Race Amity Day, uh, which is also in June. And, and I think on Father's Day that um, it's a no win situation. So the idea of having things during, leading up to Juneteenth, uh, I think would 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 acknowledge that day, but but uh, at a different time and in a, in a, maybe a different setting. So we don't have to worry about getting people together on that day for some activity. I don't know what others think, but I just think it's- uh, It's hard and it's also toward the end of the school year and people are starting to check out. Um, well, we could do what we did last year and kind of runway it um, and maybe culminate it with, you know, to learn more, here's a, a very extensive reading list, you know, go a summer reading list, basically let's, let's, let's leave you with a summer reading list of books to educate you on Juneteenth. Um, but you know, we could put together some more, some additional ideas. There's, um, and and sort of do the vert the Facebook um, pr promotions that very similar to what we did last year. We just have to come up with the the eighteen um, posts. Amelia, 
So it, Ship, is it okay to go back to NDI and tell them that uh, we're willing to, that they can work with us in planning? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but how do people feel about that? Cynthia? I think you're on mute. As another person here who's also on NDI, I think these particular events in June that it would be really good to to work together. And while I have the floor, I wanted to say I thought that was very rich those 18 days, but perhaps you might have a smaller number of things during that period of time to focus on. I found it sort of I was really interested, but I'm just thinking the public in general, whether to have a, a smaller number would be easier to get people's attention. But I don't know, you may have talked with your wonderful subgroup about what they think would, would be most interesting to young people. Okay, Carrie. I, I loved the kind of the sort of daily post, and it doesn't have to be a daily post. Um, maybe it's a twice a week or a once a week or so like, but something like that, I just think it, it, it really kind of brings attention to, you know, what, what you're trying to promote rather than just a single event or a single, um, I, I personally, I really like it. I think it's a great idea. Okay. So I, Okay, and that's it's that's something that is a little bit more manageable to to um, put together. Um, thank you for the feedback on that, Marlene. Um, I was I agree. I was thinking maybe just once a week or something, but I was also wondering if it would be good to send it to um, like the the all the school um, newsletters for a week during for Juneteenth or, or for Pride too, if you um, but um, you know to, through. I don't know, through the PTCs or whatever, so that the parents also see, um, and for the younger kids, so they know what's going on. It, I mean, it, it's not writing something separate, it's just distributing it. Okay, Jen. Um, I'm just gonna play devil's advocate and say, I, I liked the, the 18 days in a row of, of um, posting, because I feel like, it was like a, a countdown to something exciting kind of thing. Like the anticipation of it to me was kind of neat. I can, um, I know that it was a lot of work for you, Tina, to put together 18 days on, on Facebook, but yeah, that's all right. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I think, I mean, you, nobody has to read everything, <laughs> but, but you never know what's going to kind of capture somebody's attention. And I don't know. I liked having the daily thing. I thought it was kind of neat. Amelia. I agree. Uh, I forgot to take my hand down. <laughs> um, I agree. I, in fact, I, when I opened my computer every morning and it wasn't posted yet, <laughs> I had to keep going back because I really look forward to uh, each day. I mean, it was something short and sweet. And if I didn't have time to go through a book list, I just copied that down and, and that was something uh, on my to-do list. But I, I thought it was kind of exciting. Okay. Um, I am leaning more towards one a day as well. It was not, I mean, I scheduled them out. So it, it, they just kind of automatically, you know, once the initial work was done, it was fine. Um, but may, do you want to, who would we be dealing with at NDI besides, um, is there anybody else from NDI that wants to that we should be talking to and maybe we can get their feedback as well. <clears throat> yeah, Amelia. Uh, well, I certainly Rebecca Drill, um, the board, you know, we could check people uh, on the board uh, and see who would, usually we work as a group in, in the, recently mm -hmm. on, on planning things. So we're about eight mm -hmm. people right now on the board. Mm -hmm. So we could, uh, we could start an email and ask. Um, yeah. It, just to get feedback. I mean, I think it, right now we're, it seems split. We're sort of six of one, half a dozen the other. Um, so if they, if there's strong feelings either way, if there aren't strong feelings either way, then I'm, I'm happy to 
organize the 18 days, 19 days. Cynthia. Yeah, do we need to do a vote about um, inviting them to be a co-sponsor? Uh, and if we do, I think one of the things we say, we, we would like you to be a co-sponsor and please give us one contact person. Anyway, there's the board, but it's good to have one person who would- Right, and that one person can join our subcommittee meetings. Um, I don't know if we have to vote, so I, we might as well just to make sure that we're above board. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm doing, you guys. Okay. Okay. I make a motion that NDI be invited to be a co-sponsor with and, and, human and rights. Not just in name, June. but to also share in the work. They're wanting to. They want to. Okay. Just but like I we wanna... want them to with us. Okay. Could I have a second, please? Second. I'll second. Okay. Cynthia. Yes. Jen. Uh, yes. Amelia? Yes. Marlene? Yes. Ben? Yes. Emmy? Yes. Carrie? Yes. yes. Okay. So we approved NDI's co sponsorship of Juneteenth in name and in effort. Um, Emmy, Carrie, and Danica, I will email you guys so that we can meet again shortly. Um, because we're now we're May is kind of staring us down in the face. Um, so over the next week or so, I'll email you guys and we'll try to button this up. And then in the meantime, um, Amelia and or Cynthia, if you could figure out who from NDI we need to be um, looping in, that would be great. So, uh, Jen. Um, I'm happy to help try to come up with some content to um, to put up if that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Are we doing so, yeah. this for both Pride oh. and Juneteenth, or just Juneteenth? No, Pride is the just Juneteenth. Pride is our as our uh, so. Okay. Pride is wishing tree and reading list, okay. and then NDI banners I believe are going up again. Juneteenth is the countdown okay. reading list. Um, and then the, the co-sponsorship with NDI. Thank you. Okay. Cynthia. Uh, I'm, I wanted to ask whether the uh, doing some kind of book discussion, whether that's still on the table for the Pride Month activities or whether that's not- Yeah, if we, can, if we can get it, to, if we can pull it together, yeah. Yeah, just to include that in the list, thanks. Yep. Marlene? Um, Emmy had uh, suggested that maybe the wishing tree also be at town hall. So are we talking just about the high school or town hall or I was even thinking the library. I'm just curious what, what you're thinking. So we'll do, I, we're gonna try to get this up at the high school. I wanna try to, we're trying to, I want some focus on the youth just because they're, they've been having a moment during the year, this year, especially the um, groups at the, at the Needham High School. And then I um, got a application from Miles to display the tree. It's about a five foot tall tree that I have that I use at the shop. Um, there's a little, there's a smaller space at Town Hall where we're allowed, to, we can put this tree up and we'll try to kind of make it a little bit more of a robust display. I, it's not a huge space, but um, we'll try to build it out as much as possible. So to get some attention, I don't think the library will be able to do it. Um, they're willing just to do the reading list at this point. If you guys can think of any other place that we can maybe duplicate this. And then the other thing is we're going to, um, put out on Facebook, um, the town, the Cindy, Cynthia, Cindy's, Cindy's newsletter. Um, and I think Emmy and Finn, you had talked about also, uh, reaching out to some groups in the high school just to start collecting wishes and affirmations and we're going to we were we're going to go through them and edit them out just to make sure that, you know they're going to be displayed so we just have to make sure everything is appropriate but if there are any other places you guys can think of i mean it's something that sort of i, I feel like it's easy to duplicate once we have the affirmations the wishes and the, the educational talking points we just have to make copies and and hang them up so if there's any other place you guys can think of let me know
Amelia. When is the town meeting? Is there a town meeting? May 2nd, I think. And in the... Uh, hmm. Next Monday. Oh. Where's Katie? She will come in. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> May 2nd and May 9th. And then the next one will be in October. Okay, so we'll miss the, um, the tree. Won't be ready. Won't be ready, okay. I could ask the clergy association. I know that there's a number who might be interested. Would you like that, Tina? Yeah, that would be great, actually. Meetings in a couple of weeks. Okay. Finn, Emmy, Danica, any other, anything else I missed or anything else that you guys want to add? Everything sounds great. Um, yeah, everything sounds good. I think what I'll do or what Finn and I will do, we can make a, like some sort of link I feel like online might be easiest and then we can sort of find some sort of like format for it or I don't know maybe I'm trying to decide if like if handwritten things would be better to see or just like kind of the message is really the most important part but it might feel more personal if it was like handwritten yeah so either way just like setting up um a link or something trying to reach out to people. I think an email is a good idea, but um, also if it's like handwritten and by town center or something, it might expand um, to people who can write things down. So I think it depends like um, how big the target audience you guys were thinking. And um, if it is online, it would definitely be easier to sort through everything too. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Jen? I wonder if there are any local businesses that we could enlist to like participate. Like, uh, I, um, I don't know, Emmy, you could use your powers of persuasion to get Jay to give like free cookies out for anybody that <laughs> has a, a leaf to the tree or, yeah. you know, or a cookie <laughs> monster because it's, it's right across from the high school and gets a lot of students there or something if, if anybody... I don't know, it, it would be neat to try to get some, um, I don't know, we, we might get more chatter about it if we could tie it into a free cookie or something, I don't know. Um, well, speaking as a former business owner in the Needham community, <laughs> it's not, uh, the, those types of efforts in the past have not been super successful, but I am, willing to get out there and give it a go <laughs> i'm just in for the free cookies tina no i was just like uh i'm like i understand you're begging people to hang up the martin luther king poster martin luther king day posters <laughs> just put up the poster yeah just, good point just put good up the poster. Point. <laughs> but you know there are there are some select folks i think that maybe we could target and and um mm -hmm. with whom i have pretty good relationships and and maybe you know it doesn't hurt to ask yeah but if people are putting things on the tree, there's right then and there, there's the part about the screening to make sure they're appropriate. You know if that's a concern. Right. So we'll, we're we going to screen everything first before it goes up on the tree. It's not. But if you had something where you people came in and they got a cookie, if they wrote something, you there's not. Oh. the. I'm just saying how to balance that. Yeah. Okay. The creativity, so we're all going for those cookies. <laughs> Amelia. Where'd she go? Um, Amelia, did you have something? I, you're no, Amelia. I didn't. I'm sorry. I keep okay, that's okay. Finn? Um, I think the idea behind like putting it around like businesses would um, would be good. And also like proving to Cynthia's point about, I think it would be more like if we put it in like businesses or anything like that, it would be like, something down like a box and then we would take the box and like go through everything and then put it on the tree and I think it would the tree would probably be like out of like reach for people and then you you would just put it in a box so that nothing inappropriate or offensive or incorrect is going on the tree because that's really important for this type of stuff okay yeah I agree um we'll ha we the four of us are going to hammer all this out shortly right okay um any other comments or questions um, about our two initiatives for June? 
um, Finn, Emmy, and Danica did all the work on this. So I just, you guys wanted, wanted to let you guys know that this is, I'm just kind of helping move along their, their, um, their thoughts and their ideas. They came up with all of this. So I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy schedules to, to put the effort in for this. I think it's gonna be great. Okay. Um, Amelia is up next. Indigenous Peoples Day is um, was something she wanted added to the agenda. Amelia. Uh, yeah, it's Cynthia too. Cynthia and I are, are representing um, the Human Rights Committee, and and we've both been serving on the committee. Um, one of the the person who has been taking the lead in organizing the planning committee, we, we were, I think there were about six or eight of us that, that came together from, from Equal Justice Needham, NBI, a Human Rights Committee, and we have been uh, supporting two uh, Needham High School students, um, uh, Fernanda and Nick, and uh, in, in their initiative to change Indigenous peoples, the, the name, um, to Indigenous Peoples Day on the school calendar. So that, that's how the group initially came together. In the meantime, we have been meeting over the last two years and talking about what the next steps might be. The person who has been leading the group, Julie Reich, ha, is stepping down. And we need people, um, if there's anyone on the committee that would like to join this group um, to not to be, uh, uh, we're not, asking for people to lead the group, but, but to join the group and, and um, think about ways that we could make more visible indigenous people's rights and, and issues uh, within the community. And, and, and in small ways, we're not thinking about making big changes, but at our last planning meeting, we did come up with lots of interesting ideas, but at this point, uh, what we need are more volunteers. So we're asking people in, in all of these groups uh, if they are interested to join us and do a brainstorming session very much like uh, you did, um, you and uh, Finn and Emmy and Danica did uh, together with, with Tina in planning the Juneteenth event. So if anyone is interested, uh, could you please let Cynthia or I know so we can uh, tell you about the next planning meeting. We don't meet that often, uh, every few months. Uh, and and it's, it, we do a lot of communication by email, but it, it's really, um, we have, we, I think it's an area that we really need to focus on. And, and we have not done much in our community. Wellesley has done a lot and they work very hard. Uh, and we started on that path, but we, just kind of came to a halt because of other issues that, that uh, we were involved with. So anyway, uh, if anyone is interested in joining, could you please let Cynthia and I know. Cynthia, do you want to add something? Um, yes, I think that there is the focus on Indigenous Peoples Day and having that replace Columbus Day. We understand there's now a slash, Columbus Day slash Indigenous Peoples Day on some of the town, you know, looking around to see Katie, uh, some of the town, the town calendar. And I know it's replaced Columbus Day for the school department. And that was a, a big uh, thrust of the work and that the Nick and Fernanda did. It was very, uh, very well received. And the idea is to that we need to be involved in educating and improving people's awareness of indigenous people's rights and our um, ancestors here. And so it's, it's much more than just the day. And I, I like the idea that people could contact Amelia, but if there's, if, if now we have all of your attention here, if there's anybody who would like to join this group, it's very interesting. And we do, some of us have some contact with people who are, um, whose ancestors lived on our land. And that that's, that will be, I think, an exciting part of what we're doing. So I'll make a plea for, if, you, if you're feeling moved right now to, to raise your hand and we will be glad to have your help. <laughs> Cynthia, 
Thanks, Tina. And yes, also, of course. Emmy and um, Finn, if you could ask around uh, the school, uh, Fernanda is, is one of the students who will be graduating, so she won't be with us after this uh, school year. So if we could get more students on board, if you know of anyone that might be interested in Indigenous uh, Peoples, and it's not Indigenous Peoples Day. If I, I just go very quickly, um, if I could just look at my notes, at our last meeting, um, our, our goals, we finalized our committee's goals, and that is to raise awareness, educate, collaborate with, and get support from existing town groups, and ultimately celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day in Needham. So right now our goals are, are not um, great. Uh, we're taking small steps, but um, we have made some progress and we'd like to build on that. So if you have any suggestions, please get in touch with us. Marlene. I was just wondering if you guys have been in touch with anybody at First Parish, because I, um, you have, okay, because I was thinking there might be some people at First Parish who are interested in getting involved. Okay, just an idea. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Amelia and Cynthia. Um, next item on the agenda is race amity co-sponsorship. I don't remember, did we do this last year? Do we have to vote on this every year? No. Oh, wait a minute. Can I put my hand up? Yeah. Uh, we uh, we were a co-sponsor in um, 2019, and then um, I think everything just ground to a halt in 2020. But 2021, they did it as um, a couple of, of videos, which were really well right. done. But when we discussed it, we thought it just didn't really make sense to be a co-sponsor for two, two videos. So now they're, if I could give a two minute summary of what's, what's proposed. Yeah. And uh, they're looking for co-sponsorship that as we were asking them to be a working partner that, that somebody from this group would be a working partner for um, the Race Amity Day. Uh, Race Amity Day is Sunday. June 12th, fortunately that is not Father's Day. <laughs> it's held annually. Um, it's recognized in observance by the state. It celebrates the friendships between people of different races and cultures and recognizes the collaborations which advance equity and social justice. The plan is to have an outdoor observance, rain or shine, here we go, outdoors, at Amity Path at the Needham Reservoir. Uh, the latest time that's being uh, proposed is four to six because there's a pride event that the Congregational Church is doing earlier that day. We don't want to conflict with. There'll be a program and, and some kind of refreshments, probably prepackaged foods. So um, I don't know whether you need to have a, a formal vote, but at least to find out if just as they're going to partner with us on Juneteenth, that we could part, partner with them on Race Amity Day. And if they would like at least one contact person, and they're, they've considered a number of things for the program, but it hasn't been um, decided on yet. The program for 2019, which was held at the Historic, Historical Museum and Center, was um, at various they had food and people mixed around and that was a good part of it. And there were some presentations and there was a new film uh, about Metco that, that was shown. And that, so every time the programs have been different. So it's an opportunity to help shape the program as well as to um, be part of something that's already partly underway. And if the Human Rights Committee is willing to be a co-sponsor. The town would allow the event to happen at Amity Path by the reservoir. Well, there's an area right there where <clears throat> things generally don't happen, but I understand from Kim, Kimberly Nichols, who's talked with Miles, I'm trying to remember his name. Yeah, about the process of applying to use it. 
Okay, does anybody have any questions or comments before we take a vote? Seeing none, can I have a, a motion to for sponsorship of co-sponsorship of Race Amity Day? A motion. I, I can make it, but oh, for Amelia. <laughs> can I have a second, please? I can second. second. Okay. Cynthia? Yes. Jen? Yes. Amelia? Yes. Marlene? Yes. Then? Yes. Emmy? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Okay, great. So we um, have voted to co-sponsor Race Amity 2022. And Cynthia, you are looking for somebody to also join the working group, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so if somebody, if there's anybody that's interested, would you guys please email Cynthia directly? And then- no, I'd like to find it right it. now so that we can move forward with it because they're right in the middle of planning it. Unlike the Indigenous Peoples Day, which we're trying to recruit, this is, we really need to have somebody. Okay. Uh, when are you guys meeting next? Or when is the next meeting? I don't think they've set up a time for it, but. They'll, we have to put a name on the uh, application to use the um, use the reservoir Amity Path area from the Human Rights Committee. So if somebody will volunteer their name, then that will at least get okay, us. Okay, yeah, that's I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. You know, maybe Perfect. Bud would be interested. That who? Maybe Bud would be interested. It's a pretty discreet thing. Yeah, I'll ask him. Oh, great. You'll ask him. Okay. I'll ask him. Um, but for now, go ahead and include me on in all the communications. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, you also wanted to discuss the Needham High School student walkout and the queer student union, Cynthia? I just had brought up that um, it's important for us to be aware of of the enormous uh, leadership and wonderful job that Jesse and Ray did and to kind of be available to support. I know that Marlene, I think was one of the people who went and stood with the group, but to be alert to or find a way to, to support their efforts. And I don't have a specific proposal, but maybe there's maybe um, Finn or Emmy might have some ideas of of what we could do on on this. There's the high school support network and community, but what we might be able to do. Um, are either of you, Finn or Emmy, are either of you involved with the Queer Student Union or um, familiar with any of their additional efforts? Is there, do you, do you feel like there's anything that we can do as a group to help support them? Uh, okay, Emmy. Um, I'm not familiar, like, I'm not involved, um, but I do think that we could try reaching out to them and asking um, sort of what they're trying to get involved with. Um, but yeah, as of right now, I don't know. I would have to look into it. Okay, um, maybe something that maybe they, we can tie them into the pride events that we're trying to put together. Yeah, that's good. Okay. That's exactly what I was going to say too, Tina. Maybe we could invite them to co-sponsor it with us and that would be a way to build some relationships oh. and connections. Okay. Does anybody have any other ideas or suggestions? Finn. Um, I think like Jen said, just keeping them like in the loop with anything like 
pride related or just in general um, with the town, because I think that would just help build a relationship that's like really beneficial for both them and just to help us reach youth and other people. Okay, Amelia? I'm wondering if there's a way that um, they might share some information that we could post on our Facebook page as well as events that they, they might be organizing, but maybe something about them, who they are. Um, Jesse and Ray did a wonderful video, which was broadcast on the Needham channel, uh, but we, perhaps something uh, in writing, um, maybe some pictures, um, if they could put something together, um, we could post it on our Facebook page and promote their work that way. Marlene. And I was thinking about um, engaging with them to help with the wishing tree and some of the um, uh, statements. Um, so, I mean, I thought they, the, um, the video that, that uh, Dan did with them was really, they were, they're very articulate. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was fantastic. Um, so I, I'm sure, um, I mean, they may be very busy, but, um, Jesse, I don't know Ray very much, but Jesse seems to be like an incredible leader. So maybe we can reach out to, her, to, to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank so you. we'll um, we'll try to form the bridge between us and um, Ray and Jesse for our Pride event events. Mm -hmm and see if we can, if they have any marketing collateral or assets that they want to put together or um, have already in their back pocket that we can share across our channels. Great, thank you. Okay, yeah, of course. Thanks for bringing that up. Charles River Regional Chamber Collaboration. Um, Amelia, I believe this is something that you had asked me to put on the agenda. Um, I have been in touch with them regarding, with Greg, regarding the, um, I did have a conversation with him about the anti-Russian state, uh, the anti-Russian sentiment statement that was put together. So he received the English and the Russian versions. Um, you know, his first comment to me was, has, did something happen to, to uh, prompt this? And I said, no, we were just trying to be proactive in the event that something does happen. Uh, and obviously because of what's happening in the Ukraine, um, the sentiment sort of in general is starting to develop. So we were trying to get ahead of it. Um, Amelia, did you want to add anything else about a collaboration with the chamber? Yeah, I just wanted to give a heads up and we could come back to this in the future, but there has been, there have been conversations at Voices in Unity um, that began about a year ago, Voices in Unity meeting about collaborating. Uh, and we have been talking about connecting to different groups in town. And one of the groups we haven't connected with is the business community. And um, we have been looking at the Charles River Regional Chamber uh, and what they have been doing to promote um, inclusivity. And they have a committee, uh, just to, to, to make you aware uh, that they are taking some steps in the community. Uh, they have an inclusivity committee website. And on the website, it says, creates programming designed to help our members understand the value and benefits to creating a more diverse and inclusive workplace and they also advise chamber leadership to ensure their board committees and programming with reflect those values. They were very supportive of the Voices in Unity booth uh, reservation that we made last fall. And they also conducted a webinar and Katie, if you could put that on the screen, they conducted a webinar which I attended and I was very impressed this is just the advert, excuse me, this is just the advertisement, but, and this a guest speaker who was a, a business person herself did an excellent job. It was very general, very basic, but I think it was a, a, a very um, um, significant step for, for the chamber to take to 
promote discussions within the, the various businesses in, in Needham. And you could read some of the um, highlights of that. It was an hour long, it was midday, and the, the um, speaker did an excellent job in, in making it very concrete and, and highlighting the most basic uh, aspects of um, anti-racist work. see and you to my notes um let me see paula dickerman who's at equal justice needham is also interested in pursuing this and at one of the voices in unity meetings she organized uh she proposed that we organize a meeting with greg and how do you pronounce his name tina is it reibman or reibman you know? I've heard re reeb e okay. uh, long e that's what I've heard but I, I, okay. I well he's the president it. of the chamber yeah. and he was interested in meeting with with representatives from the human rights committee equal justice needham and needham diversity uh, initiative uh, to talk about ways that we might collaborate and I, I think in the near future, we're going to be having another meeting with the, the different groups. Tina, you had organized that a couple of years ago and people are really interested in coming together and just touching base on what each of our groups is doing. And, and that is one of the items that they would like to discuss a little bit more. One more thing I want to say uh, about connecting to the business establishment. I have information that from several people of color in the community of having very negative experiences visiting businesses in the community. Mm -hmm. And I really think that there, we really need to reach out to the business the community to, to make them more aware of their practice and their sometimes insensitivity to um, interacting with people who they normally don't see in their establishment, like after school, uh, parents of color walking into a business establishment and, and being treated in a very uh, negative way, and obviously negative way. I think this is an area that, that we need to focus on and to, um, look at a little bit more closely and have a discussion with with the business and i think the chamber would probably be a good place to start and maybe join forces with them so that is that is the only thing i wanted to share with you and we will be meeting and discussing so we'll have more to share with you as we discuss it further and particularly when we have a meeting with greg do you want to add anything tina because you you are in the business community, you sort of represent that. Yeah, I I um I have heard as well uh, a couple of stories about uh, folks being treated poorly. Um, the Needham in particular, the Needham business community is it's it's tough <laughs> because uh, a lot of the a lot of the organizations here are, I mean, there definitely, there has been some turnover, but there are a lot of longstanding, you know, older establishments that just have a different way of, they've been around for 30, 40, 50 years, um, a different way of doing things, a different way of seeing things. So um, I definitely think that there's, there is an educational component, um, an awareness component that uh, is lacking. And I, I do think that that what you're suggesting is is important. Um, it's just a matter of trying to figure out how to reach out and um, get those folks interested in changing perspective. And right? I thought the initiative they took in, in organizing this webinar was a great start. And people did participate and there were people, I, uh, who identified themselves at the beginning, who came from all different businesses in the community. It wasn't just Needham, it was the, some of the surrounding communities as well. So I think this will go far. But I- I, I mean, I, I also think that it's um, it's not, it's, it's about how people are treated. I also think it's about the business community in general. There are very few faces of color that own businesses in Needham. 
Um, I think I was one of, I, I can count them on my, my hand and I'm no, you know, I no longer own my business here. So um, I think that is also part of the problem is that it's, uh, there's just underrepresentation within the business owners. Um, and I, that's also been a challenge. So, you know, sort of across the board, I feel like there's a lot that we could do to um, move things forward. Um, and it, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Greg, you know, cause I've never actually really talked to him one-on-one -on -one about this particular issue. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what his, his thoughts and perspectives are on, um, on this. Does anybody else have any comments or questions about that? Okay, so Amelia, keep us posted and, um, you know, I'm happy to jump in if it's something that, if you, you know, if there's a, a business perspective is needed, I'm happy to, to get involved with that. Um, the discrimination complaint process is moving forward. <laughs> Marlene, do you want to talk about the training, training component? Yeah. Um, please. So, um, we, uh, I contacted Leora Norwich, who's from the Network for Social Change. She was a presenter at, at my neighbor's table and she um, is very knowledgeable. Um, and she was able to put together a training for us uh, about the um, discrimination complaint process. And the, um, the town uh, generously offered to pay for, for the training for us. It would be a three hour like nine to 12 training for all of us. Um, but we decided the town wanted us to spend the money before the end of the fiscal year. And we decided that that was not um, really gonna be feasible for us to find a time. Um, so we were thinking about doing it after the end of this fiscal year into the new fiscal year. And I guess we're just waiting to see, um, I haven't gotten back to Lior cause I was waiting to hear from Katie if that was approved. <laughs> And I, I'm optimistic, but I can't confirm definitively. We have to get through town meeting and then um, get a, a bit more further into our planning for next fiscal year. Um, so that would start July 1. So as soon as I can give 100% confirmation, I'll reach out to you so you can follow up with. So yes, because then we are going to need to find a time and we would like to have as many of you as possible be part of this training. It's going to be crucial. And so we were thinking of um, a Saturday morning um, like a nine to 12 is, is pretty much what she was thinking. And, you know, we were thinking on Zoom, but, you know, who knows if we're talking about the fall, because um, I don't think the summer doesn't make sense. Um, so that's where we are with the training. Um, it was a bunch of back and forth with Leora till she sort of understood what we were, what we were looking for. And she does all kinds of different trainings. And I actually did an additional training with her, not just with At My Neighbor's Table, but a facilitation training, which is a two-part training. And there were people from all over the country. And she partnered with um, um, a person of color from Dorchester. He was fantastic. Uh, it was just, a. there were only 12 of us and it was just an amazing uh, training that, um, that I went through with her. So I'm excited that she has come up with something. I'm excited that hopefully the town is gonna to pay for it. Um, so that's where we are um, with that. Um, and then uh, I am working on um, just, you know, we had discussed sort of reworking the flow chart and putting in some of the additional things that we had talked about, which Marlene and I haven't finished yet, but as soon as I do, I'll touch base with you just so that you and I can touch base before we present to everybody else. Um, so it's it, it's taking a little bit longer than we liked, but this training piece is huge that we were able to find, so that Marlene was able to find somebody that fit the bill um, and the budget and really nails exactly everything that we need in order to move forward with, with the process. So that's a, that was a huge, you know, that's uh, select board will not move forward with, will not give the go ahead unless um, the training component has been figured out. So that's a huge, that's a huge win for us. Um, Jen. So I guess that was partly going to be my question. Has the, has the select board approved 
the process yet? Or it sounds like no. We have to, we have to find just finalize everything. Um, the training part was one of those pieces. They they wanted to know what that was going to look like. Um, you know who we were going to who was going to do the training. What does the training involve? So that piece has been figured out. We just have to figure out the rest of the flow chart, finalize that. And then once we get all of that put together, it'll go to select board. But well, we have to present it to the select board. Yeah, we have yeah. to pre present so it. So no, it has not been approved, you know. So has the, um, so the training, is it just generally on investigating complaints or mediation or like what, it, if, if the training no, is not about the actual process, what is it about? It, it is it is about the process and how you listen to people. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I don't have the document in front of me. Um, it's somewhere in my emails. Um, but I can um, I can look through and find it and send it out if if you like that. Okay, Marlene, I don't mean to put you on the spot either. I was just was curious if they if they haven't approved it yet. If like what the what the focus of the training is, but I think I, from what I'm understanding, from what you're saying, they just wanted to hear that we had some idea of bringing in an outside person to talk about facilitating these kind of investigations. It sounds like right. Good job. Thanks. Giving us the tools that we need. Does anybody else have any other questions or comments? Oh, Cynthia. Cynthia. Cynthia, are you, I think you're on mute. I'm never on mute at home. So uh, <laughs> I understand Leora is very experienced. I remember meeting her, you know, seeing her at the at my neighbor's table. And um, I thought that the kind of training I'm imagining if I were part of this process that I would want to have would be more in the area of, of legal kinds of things. I think people always can benefit from more listening though but i don't i don't think that's sufficient for being involved in in this kind of work and every so often we would say oh my gosh you know like we we do the once a year thing to learn about open meeting law there's an an awful lot it seems to me that one needs to learn that's not just the facilitation i think we've oh, most of us have had lots of experience there and you can always gain more, but that wouldn't be enough for me from what I know of this to equip me to be able to feel I was trained to do it. Sorry to be bringing that up, but that's what occurs occurs to me. Marlene, do you? Uh... I'm gonna go back and take a look at exactly what um kind of worked out with Leora and, and maybe, you know, I can send it to people for their feedback. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions or comments? Okay. Cynthia, do you ha did you have something else? No? Okay. Um, I was not able to attend the last uh, Resilience Network meeting. Cynthia, do you, you want to um, just give a quick summary of what what you guys it, talked about? Yeah. Get my my right sheet of paper here. Uh, in general, they're continuing to work on relationship building and communication skills, including deep listening training before getting into the more potentially divisive, difficult issues that are there in our town. Uh, I thought it was really useful and they're gonna do this every month is to have three people presenting groups that they're from. And we all know Joanne Allen Willoughby and she talked about METCO and a little bit about the real coalition. Jen Shek Khan, uh, who's active with the Needham CPAC, Special Education Parent Advisory Council. She's also connected with Charles River Center. 
the Needham Commission on Disability. The person who was new to me, and I think to a lot of the group, uh, is Zeni, Zenat Rashid, Z-E-E-N-A-T-R-A-S-H-E-E-D. And she is part of the network, she's part of the Needham Muslim ne Neighbors, an informal group of 20 plus families in Needham span diverse ethnic backgrounds. I think Renaz is now part of that group too. Um, they mostly connect by Facebook. Uh, it seems like a really imp important development that that group is there and they want to be involved in dialogue with the growth and the needs of the town. That's it. Okay, great. We're meeting again Thursday, right? Right. Okay. So and we'll Renaz is day. also part of, of the group representing the Immigration Justice Task Force. Okay, thanks. Um, and uh, Amelia had the idea of inviting the new president of the Metco Parent Council to attend our next meeting or attend a meeting. Um, I actually know her, Aveline, because uh, her daughter, Jalea, has been friends with the twins since uh, pre-K. Um, is that something you guys would be interested in? If I can, she's, she's a hard person to peg down, but if it's, if I can get her onto our schedule, um, is that something you guys would be interested in, in, um, having her speak and just introduce herself again? It's, uh, she's the new president of the Metco Parent Council here in Needham. Sure. I had, I, whoops, go ahead. Cynthia. Uh, I've had a chance to to meet her at the because she's part of the network and be in a small group. Right. With her. She's dynamic, personal, personable. She's a fabulous person and extremely busy. I think if we invite her to come, we should invite her for just a period of time and really listen to what she might have to share and maybe have some some thoughtful questions to ask her. But it would be lovely yeah, yeah. if you come. She's great. I, I would definitely have her present at the beginning and um, um, yeah, try to focus the her presentation um, because she is she is a hard person to pin down. Um, but if there's interest, I can reach out to her and see what she says. Okay. And then uh, you know we're running. We're almost there, you guys. Um, Jen had a great idea for our last meeting of the year, uh, would somebody, would you guys be interested instead of sort of a meeting meeting, having a speaker come and talk to us about an issue or something that is of interest to the group? I, I can't see faces or, uh, so could you guys just raise your hands if, if there's interest? Okay, so there's general, yeah, there's general interest in having somebody meet, uh, present at the, their last meeting of the year. Um, Jen, do you, wanna, do you wanna just touch base about that? And we can kind of brainstorm on some ideas. Sure, that sounds great. Okay, and uh, we're our CRT, the critical race theory piece, uh, I'm waiting to hear back from Mary Lammy um, about collaborating with, with us. So that's why this is not on the agenda because we're basically, Right now we're, we are where we were at last month. Um, hopefully we'll have a little bit more clarity on that next, next month. We'll have some information about whether or not we're gonna be able to do something with those guys. Okay, so Jen, I will email you about that. And the meeting schedule went out, the draft. Um, did everybody, does anybody have any questions or any comments or did you notice any glaring conflicts? If you didn't get a chance to look at it, that's fine. If you could just um, email Katie by the end of next week, I feel like that's sort of reasonable. Does that work? Yes. Okay, yeah. good. And Tina, if I could yeah. just um, chime in. So there's only one third Thursday that is a conflict with school break in April. Um, so if at the next meeting, if 
we want to finalize if we want to do a week earlier or a week later in April. This is April of 2023 we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so we have time, but um, just that's really the only kind of action point. And second, I'll just mention um, the state uh, laws that are letting us meet entirely by Zoom right now are only extended through July. Um, I imagine there'll be some change again. And obviously this group doesn't meet in the summer. So we'll just have to reconnect um, in August to give a sense of what our options are for the September meeting. So I, I'll be in touch with everyone over email when we have more. Okay. Marlene. This is just this is just another item. I was just wondering um, how we're doing with recruitment for the committee. I haven't heard anything from anybody. Okay. No. <laughs> I saw you just. No. Okay. No. So no. maybe maybe we need to ask Cindy to put it out there. I don't know if that's where it should go, but um, you know we are operating in a uh, a reduced um, number, and it would be good to be. A, have our full complement of committee members. Cynthia. Uh, two more things about the June meeting and a speaker. Could we leave some time for doing business? Because I'm sure there will be some things that we need to do that month. Yes. Uh, not wanting to have meetings in July or August. <laughs> and the other thing is I'd mentioned earlier about the um, and I think Marlene brought it up the, about Needham Connects, and we are actually one of the sponsors, I think, of the, mm -hmm. those book discussions. So the next one's May 26th, and it sounds really good, the book Poet Warrior, um, a memoir by Jay Harjo, who's the Native American poet, and to be sure that we do what we can to publicize it. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, of course. Jen. Real quick, I was just going to say maybe we could um, advertise a open spots on the committee in some of our posts for um, for Juneteenth. That might we might get some hits from people. Yeah, that's a good idea. Amelia. We also wrote, a previous member wrote a statement about why join the Human Rights Committee, and perhaps we could uh, have that as part of a, a call for action uh, in the newsletter, in the town newsletter. Uh, it, it used to be on our website, I haven't checked lately, on the town website, a web page for Human Rights Committee, but it was a very nice piece why one would join, uh, be part of a Human Rights Committee, and that might encourage people to think about joining the group. Uh, so it was on our, the website through the town. Yeah, maybe I can, Marlene, you, um, you might look at, I'll check through my, my computer crash several years ago, so I may have lost it, but uh, let me check. I may still have that statement. You probably have it. I, if you don't have it, I bet you Cynthia does. <laughs> it might still be, I'll check our web page too. Okay. Okay. Does anybody, uh, Katie? Um, I just pulled up the, the web page and it is still up on the HRC town page. Okay. All right, so yeah, that's a good idea. We'll, we'll put together a post um, okay. and maybe I can send that to Cindy and she can put that in the next available, you know, on the next available slot that's for the newsletter that she sends out. I'll touch base with her. Does anybody have any else, anything else that was a lot to get through and we, not too far, too far off time. We're good. Can I please have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> so moved. Does anybody, does anybody want to second that? I second. Okay, Amelia. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Jen. Yes. Marlene. Yes. Ben. Yes. Emmy. Yes. Carrie. Yes. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Nice to meet you, Danica. <laughs>